is, however, an evil for which there is no remedy. Our liberty depends on press freedom, and that cannot be limited without being lost. Welcome to Globe Watch Special. I am Charles Ebuni inside the Cameroonian Ministry of Communication here in Yaoundé, Cameroon. One year ago today, the Globe Watch idea was first aired on this channel. One year ago today, we are celebrating stories and reflecting on how we have contacted the diplomatic community in Cameroon as our mission statement indicates. And one year after, we have a 41,000 Facebook membership authorizing us to say we are the most followed on the Cameroon radio television, the heart of the nation. In a moment, we will evaluate Globe Watch together. But first, a media check of Press Freedom Day, whose 20th anniversary was celebrated this week across the world. As writer Voltaire stated in Dictionnaire Philosophique, published in 16 in 1764, we have a natural right to make use of our pens as of our tongue at our peril, risk, and hazard. So was the theme for this year's World Press Freedom Day, safe to speak, securing freedom of expression in all media. And our special anniversary guest today is the first Cameroonian cabinet member to be quizzed on Globe Watch. Communication Minister Isachi Roma Bakari. Mr. Minister, thanks very much for accepting our invitation and welcome to Globe Watch. It is my pleasure and I want to seize this opportunity to congratulate you for what you have been doing. You said that now you are on air for 12 months. Yes. You are celebrating your anniversary today. Yes. Then I join my voice to congratulate you mm -hmm. and to ask you to move forward mm -hmm. no matter what no matter how tough the condition uh, through which you are uh, acting i say that uh, uh, you are welcome thank you uh press freedom advocacy group reporters without borders 2013 press freedom index tops finland uh, the netherlands and norway as the best heavens for journalists in the world and tops uh Tagumistan, um, North Korea, and Eritrea as the worst uh, homes for journalists in the world. Uh, can you forecast a timeline when Africa will be a leader in press freedom sector? Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity to express myself. Indeed, I do not share the analysis the way of ranking and classify in this nation in this country you are a journalist i can claim loud and clear that the freedom of expression the freedom of press in cameroon is limitless the cameroon is at 129 of that report so the, probably it's not the worst i do not share this point of view we ought to have been classified as one of the best on earth. Why? Because I have the opportunity to meet uh, journalists all over the world. But here at home in particular, I have the opportunity to discuss with diplomats, European diplomats, where the freedom of uh, expression, the freedom of press is very well known and very well famous. They always keep repeating, they always keep saying always the same thing, the freedom of press that we do have in this nation. Many European countries do not have it. Here in Cameroon, you are free to say whatever you want, even if you defame, you calumniate, you do this and that. No journalist has been taken to book. No journalist in jail today because of the exercising of his profession. I contest, I refuse to accept this classification. The ranking of Cameroon is wrong. Okay. We ought to have been among the best on earth. And I think that you journalists, you share this position because you do not have any contrary a, a counter example to give that to deny, which can deny my assessment and my evaluation of the situation which is prevailing in Cameroon. Uh, Mr. Minister, probably there is a counter 
position based on political communication practices in a democratic system. Because some people think that, some Democrats think that you are an embodiment of censorship and lack of press freedom, for example, because you are at the head of a government department which is not supposed to exist in a democratic community. That is why the U.S. does not have a Ministry of Communication, the U.K., because they believe that the creation of the Ministry of Communication is an embodiment of censorship. So maybe they are using diplomatic language to lo lo lobby you. Well, um, I respect the assessment of the situation. I respect the prism through which they analyze the situation. But let me remind you one thing. There is a uh, United Nations Charter for the Human Right. Mm -hmm. And there is no United Nations Charter for Democracy. <laughs> there is not. Each country has its own way to build democracy. Because they, they, they do not have a Ministry of Communication doesn't mean and doesn't say that they are the ones who are right and we are wrong. Completely the contrary. We, you, you, you have many uh, um, uh, countries in Europe in general, even mm -hmm. in France in particular. Mm -hmm. The freedom that you, you do have here, you blackmail people in, 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 in your newspaper, in radio and television. What you are doing here, dealing with people, their owner, their family, in Europe you cannot. You, 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 you might have been arrested, brought to book and jailed. If, or if what you are doing here, you did it uh, in Europe. So um, I understand, you see, they are the opinion makers, they are opinion leaders, and what they say must be considered as a gospel, as a uh, parole d'evangile, as we said. Uh, we, we, we refuse it. Okay. Uh, I am in charge of communication in this nation. I am dealing with you uh, freely, in, uh, you journalists. Mm -hmm. You are treating me, you are treating the head of state, you are treating uh, uh, all Cameroonian through your own prism without giving us the, the necessary consideration. But this does not, has never been translated into harassing you or uh, bringing you to book. You agree with me? But you know of journalists who have died of very doubtful situation in Cameroon. In, 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 anyway, in this program, we hardly talk about Cameroon, but since we are with the Minister of Communication, let me just read some statistics to you uh, provided by the Committee to Protect Journalists, which is another think tank. Um, it says that 17 journalists are jailed already this year. That 982 have been killed since 1992. That 594 have been murdered with impunity since 1992, probably the year uh, multipartism returned in Cameroon. But these statistics are not talking about Cameroon. They are global statistics. And they go again to say that 232 journalists are prisoners today. Now, uh, Mr. Minister, I would like to know from you, who crosses more of the red line for us to arrive at that situation? The journalists or the government? Well, each one has to in play a, its own. In a global situation? In the global situation, I have my own petition and mm -hmm. I am playing it as a virtuoso. Mm -hmm. And you have your own petition, you have to play your own role. The government is playing its own role. Up until now, you have never raised an issue of harassment of journalists or compelling journalists into changing their editorial line or something like this. Mm -hmm. If something of, or anything as a such mm -hmm. was prevailing here in this nation, as one person, all of you, you might have come together in order to denounce it, to protest in case the government violated a sacrosanct principle that you know. Mm -hmm. uh, who, is, who is crossing the red line? More. More. I think Who that is more irresponsible, the government or Allow me the to say that more journalists than government. Why do you say so? I say so because your first responsibility is to be the, the custodian of this nation, the well-being of this nation, the smooth moving forward of this nation. You do not respect it. From time to time, you listen to what is coming from abroad when they aggress, when they attack somebody, 
you consider what comes from abroad like something which deserves to be brought to the knowledge of this and that because what comes from abroad is uh, a gospel, as I said. But Completely wrong. What you can say, uh, um, uh, during this conversation, I want you to, to show me uh, um, uh, what you can blame on the government in, ter in terms of breaking the principle of respecting the freedom of law. But journalists uh, are not giving enough evidence to, to carry investigative journalism because um, since you want to talk about Cameroon, which I'm not ready because it's not the culture of the program, but since you insist, you know of the Bibingota affair and how it ended. But let me come back, Mr. Minister. My worry is that you think that our local people think that what comes from abroad is best for them. And it is simple for them to say that. I understand it because when most of our African leaders, presidents, ministers, Prime Ministers want to grant interviews. They go to BBC, France Van Euro Euronews. They will not come to, B to, to, to CRTV. They will not come to Canada. It's only when they are in uh, leadership difficulties that they come to this channel. So at the end of the day, the people tend to listen more to BBC, to Euronews, and France Van Cart. So how can you say that? Which is completely wrong. I see that you are the custodian of this nation. Happen what may European, they will not come to this nation to... Is it, is to, it to build nation to build Cameroon instead of us of us? Is it easy for me to grant an interview with President Beard and a journalist from France Van Catch? The your, you, what I want you to understand. What who is who is who is talking to you today? I'm the Minister of Communication. I received the green light of the President of the Republic to talk to you. Whatever I can tell you, I tell you this on behalf of the government, on behalf of okay, the government. Just of like state. you can channel my interview guide for him. Not uh, what I want you to understand, what we call division du travail. Mm -hmm. The head of state voice is the only one that can resonate abroad. The only one. So whenever there is a problem concerning the Cameroon, which deserves to be discussed, the worldwide, because we have to protect the interests of the nation, because we have to go somewhere to convince investors to come and invest. My voice is not loud enough to convince foreigners. The only voice audible that can people can understand, listen very well, is the voice of the head of state. So whenever there is a problem that concern Cameroon and which needs to be aired and, and uh, made known to the rest of the world, the voice, the only one qualify is the, the voice of the head of state. But here in Cameroon, you have many ministers, all of us, whenever need be, we meet you journalists, we discuss issue. When the minister talks to you, who is talking? The head of state, the prime minister. You have to understand, please stop repeating always what we consider in the government uh, nonsense. This, um, uh, when you say that uh, when uh, head of, uh, our head of state has to express, has to, 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 to make a statement, he does it through BBC and uh, France Ben I didn't and point a particular leader, but I was talking, I'm looking at a global picture. You agree with me that about 80% or 90%. If my statistics from where I got them do not betray me of African leaders, when they want to address issues, even those that concern their countries, they do that on foreign channels. And so the local population equally believe on those channels. Let us move to another issue, probably which has to do with the theme for this year's celebration. Safe to speak. Securing freedom of expression in all media. Let us look at the cyberspace in particular. Mm -hmm. What reading do you give to it today? Where well, there is a lot of material, and as I will be reading shortly to you a comment on that by the UN Secretary General, what do you consider the cyberspace today to look like? Cyberspace is the channel that I consider to be one of the most harmful as far as the image of the nation is concerned. Because most of those who use this channel, 
of expression to talk about their country. They give the impression not to be happy with their nation. They give the impression to have been received the, the green light, the blessing of the rest of the nation to speak and to write the way they have been doing in the cyber uh, space. That reason why we say that through radio, television and written press, I focus the mind on them because you are more sensitive, you are more acute, accurate. Uh, when you describe the facts in Cameroon, when you use radio, and television and written paper. But as far as the cyber is concerned, we have a problem with people who are behind because uh, you, you are dealing with people who, who, whom the, that you cannot see. Mm -hmm. You do not know who is speaking mm -hmm. on behalf of whom mm -hmm. they are doing it. Okay. They, they, they always blackmail. They always, they want to take hostage. Mm -hmm. They want to defame their nation. Mm -hmm. The reason why we say that what they are doing is completely wrong. You cannot uh, uh, be um, the, 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 the custodian of your nation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, a, a stockholder of your nation, one of those who have to, to, to do the best to build the nation. Then, at the same time, through this media, you go to, to defame, to denigrate, to something uh, wrong. There is something wrong somewhere there. Uh, UN Secretary General and the Director General of uh, UNESCO, Irena Bukova, Ban Ki-moon, they consider the cyberspace today as the most important source of information. And they are saying that uh, bloggers, writers, people who run websites and whatsoever are increasingly being attacked with a lot of psychological and emotional violence. Those are their words in a joint statement on this year's World Press Freedom Day. Um, you know that around the world today, cyber criminality is a major challenge to governments. I would like to have the East Sachi Roma well plan for the regulation of the cyber space. Very difficult to address this very delicate, very difficult issue. If there were a very efficient and simple solution, the international community might have found it already. This is one of the most difficult problems to handle. Problem very almost impossible to curb, the cyber criminality. But the government does not cross arm and to see people evaluating in this. Um, there are laws, there are regulations, but up until now, the government is putting in place all the necessary mechanism to protect the weak link as far as the cyber criminality is concerned. Um, it is difficult to, to tell you if I am, uh, what, what uh, the government position may, may, might be. What I can say, and which is certain, is that the government is putting in place very talented, very knowledgeable people to understand the phenomenon and to find the best solution to address all the aggression, the attack, the cyber criminality. This is not something very much easy, but the government is very well aware. The government does not cross arm. Let's talk regulation. Um, the British media industry is made up of about one million people. And um, this is a country just coming out of the phone hacking scandal, one of the uh, one of the recent blunders, professional blunders. And let's look at the Cameroonian picture, which you are comfortable speaking today. Um, you have the National Communication Council, who's, which has been revamped today, probably coming after the phone hacking scandal in the UK. When I look at the composition of that structure, it is mostly made up of journalists. Was it a government strategy to use journalists to fight against journalists? And do you think that those who are not in the council, practicing journalists who are writing articles left and right, are going to fold their arms and watch their brothers who are being appointed by the government no, to crucify no. them? No, not at all. The National Communication Council is made up of uh, nine people. Most of them are journalists. Waiting in the government if the regulation 
is playing perfectly its role, there is no need for the government to step in in order to, to regulate or to make right what is wrong. I am surprised by the fact that you are complaining because if the National Communication Council were made of civil servants, you would be among those who would complain. The government is en train de caporaliser. I don't know how you can say it in English. You Our audience is very knowledgeable to understand English and French. Okay. That I can assure you. Okay. What the government did is to put very knowledgeable journalists, very talented journalists, capable of understanding the meaning. I said in this program, we hardly talk about Cameroon, but you said you would be comfortable talking about Cameroon. Uh, will there be henceforth a possibility of journalists in this country without threats, fear from any quarter to investigate government officials on their bank accounts, on their resources, before they leave office. Because what the problem is that immediately they leave office, a few investigations are opened against some, which is of course it's called by the government. And in that level, you are using the journalists to achieve your purpose. I think that if the journalists should be independent, they should, be, they should have the opportunity of investigating ministers, president, prime minister, where they are still in office, the source of their wealth, and not when they have left. Would that be a government guarantee? Gov gendarmes to protect them so that they can do their work. Would that guarantee come in? What is the meaning and the purpose of justice? You become justice? You become a magistrate? You want to substitute yourself? That is not what we are talking. Oh, the problem, are, there is a are, branch in journalism no. called investigative journalism. And you ought, all of you, you ought to have been an investigative journalist. But let the, ju the justice plays its role. You want to substitute the, the justice uh, with uh, journalism. Something that it is but impossible you, you to, know very to well understand. That the president that of the United States of America you? was capable of resigning because of an investigative report in 1974 started by journalists in digging the Watergate scandal and so many other scandals around the world. It has been the work of journalists to help the judiciary. Why can the judiciary see investigative journalism and that part which can help them have correct information on these people? How old is our democracy? It is not a matter of old. How old is our democracy? 23 years. You compare 23 years with two centuries. And you want, to, you want Cameroon to be equal to the United States. We aspire to become. It is a matter of time. Give the government time. And on a daily basis, we will improve the, 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 the issue. Communication Minister Isachi Roma Bakari, thanks very much for accepting to be guest on our program today. Once again, thank you very much and congratulations for what you have been doing. You are a very tough journalist, but you are doing your job. The government is doing his. So, uh, you see, um, I'm the Minister of Communication, in charge of communication. You raise very tough issue without being threatened, without fearing anything. Has any journalist been threatened because of this? No. You have been, or many journalists have been impertinent whenever they have to deal with me. Not only me, all other ministers. You haven't been threatened, no threat, no menace at all. Hail the fact that Cameroon is this marvelous nation where the freedom of expression, the freedom of press is a reality. Hail Th it. Thanks very much, Mr. Minister. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That is how we started this program one year ago today. And today we are celebrating our first anniversary since we started airing Globe Watch from the Cameroon Radio Television. Today, we count some 41,000 Facebook members, making us to believe that we are the most watched program on the Cameroon Radio Television because we have such a statistic to claim. Globe Watch has interviewed personalities around the world, including African and world football legend George Weah and the president of the African parliament, Bethel Amadi Maker. We equally received children, including 15-year-old 
Ayuke Gba, Brenda, who had to talk on the day of the African child. We have talked politics, we have talked economics, and we have talked international social affairs with people with globalizing backgrounds. And today, as the public image of this program, I am glad to tell you that whether you like what we do on Globe Watch or you dislike, we have something for you. In any normal circumstances and in the normal course of history, each anniversary is accompanied by anniversary cake. Tonight, we are not doing that because you have already done that. Why? By watching us. See you next week. <laughs> the German uh, ambassador <coughs> to Cameroon, how do you say thanks very much in, in German? Vielen Dank. Uh, es war mir ein großes Vergnügen, heute hier gewesen sein zu können und ich wisch, wünsche allen Kamerunern ein frohes Weihnachtsfest und einen guten Rutsch in das neue Jahr. Spanish. Muchísimas gracias por habernos invitado a este programa. Deseo a todos los cameruneses que nos están oyendo uh, unas felices fiestas de Navidad. Muchas gracias. Bonjour. Je parle plusieurs langues de l'Union européenne <rire> et je vais parler dans ma langue maternelle. Alors, je, je vous remercie, Charles, à vous et à tout le public Cameroun. Ah non, je... je pardon. Oui, portugais. Voilà, voilà. Je vais... 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 Je para desejar a todos um feliz ano novo e um Natal e boas festas muito felizes. Muito obrigado. And then Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charles, thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege, especially to be on a panel with these august uh, personages. So thank you.